Welcome to the Nature Just Got Real Sensational Summer Minicast Series for Kids. Let's get started. Hello, Planeteers. Welcome to the new Summer Minicast Series, Episode 5. I'm your host, Dr. Chuck Darwin, and if you're watching this on video, you'll see a talking chimpanzee with a British accent. This episode is part of the Sensational Summer Series minicasts, and they are much smaller shows but powerful because they are meant to get you out and exploring, so if you don't forget to download the activity that goes with this episode. There is a new episode released every Monday through the end of August, so watch for those. Captain Jack will be hosting the next episode, so be sure to watch for that. Today we are talking about tides, what they are, what causes them, and what the different tides are called and their different characteristics. Let's get right into today's mini-cast. A tide, according to Dictionary.com, is the periodic rise and fall of the waters of the oceans and its inlets, produced by the attraction of the moon and sun and occurring every 12 hours. Now, if you live by any ocean or sea, you can see this on a daily basis, but did you know there are different kinds of tides? We'll discuss that in a minute, but first we will talk about what causes a tide. In our dictionary explanation, it says a tide is caused by the attraction of the moon and the sun, but what it means is that the tide is caused by the gravitational pull of the moon and sun, and also the rotation of the earth, but mostly by the moon and tides are constantly changing. Different phases of the moon will cause the tide to be higher or lower depending on the phase. For instance, a new moon and a full moon will cause tides that are higher because of the sun's added force. These tides are called spring tides or king tides. Now the lowest tides are called neap tides, that's an N as in Nancy, N-E-A-P, and happen when the moon is either at the first quarter or the third quarter phase because the sun's force is less during these phases. The area where the water leaves the shore and then covers it again is called the intertidal zone. In some places, the outgoing tide will leave tide pools you can look down into and see fascinating creatures. Large lakes, such as the Great Lakes surrounding the state of Michigan, also have tidal movement, but on a much smaller scale. Lake Michigan has a tidal movement of one to one and a half inches, and Lake Superior, the biggest lake, can have a tidal movement of up to three inches. Not very far, but still a tide for all that it is small. Now, there are four main types of tides, and they are as follows. A diurnal tide has one episode of high water and one episode of low water each day. These tides usually occur in locations where the moon is the farthest from the equator, like in places such as the Gulf of Mexico. A semi-diurnal tide has two episodes of equal high water and two episodes of equal low water. These tides tend to occur when the moon is directly over the equator. This is the most common type of tidal pattern, and you will see this type along the U.S. Atlantic coast. Mixed tides, like the semi-diurnal tide, can have two episodes of high water and two episodes of low water per day as well. However, unlike a semi-diurnal tide, mixed tides are unequal, meaning they do not rise and fall to the same levels. Mixed tides can either include both sets of unequal high or low waters, or only one set of equal, unequal high or low waters. Mixed tides will happen when the moon is extremely far north or extremely far south of the equator. You can view mixed tides along the U.S. Pacific coast. The first three tides listed are astronomical tides, meaning that they are influenced by gravitational actions of the sun and moon and earth. Meteorological tides represent all atmospherically influenced tides, such as those affected by wind, 
barometric pressures, rainfall, ice melting, and land drying. One example of a meteorological tide is a storm surge when wind and inverted barometric pressure combine to cause a dramatic increase in sea levels. Then there is another kind of tide called a riptide, also called an oscillating tide. This is not the same as a rip current. Riptides are very strong currents that occur as the tide pulls out of an inlet. Rip currents, on the other hand, are narrow currents that occur in surf zones that result in water flowing away from the shore, typically near a break in a sandbar, and they can be very dangerous. If you are swimming and get caught up in a rip current, do not try to swim directly back to shore. Instead, swim sideways or at an angle to remove yourself from the rip current. Doing that can save your life. So, this week's mission is to pay attention to any tidal movement you see if you are fortunate enough to visit the seaside this summer. Can you tell if the tide is in or out? Can you find any tide pools? Rescue any stranded sea stars? I know KB enjoys doing that. Make sure you download the activity sheet so you can make an ocean of your own. That's it for this episode. Tune in next week when Captain Jack tells us about a very common but very interesting insect you can probably find outside right now. Go and have a tidal observation adventure in your neighborhood. That wraps up this mini cast for today. Thank you to our sponsor, Weird and Wacky Planet. Don't forget to download your play sheets and activities for this episode. See you next Monday for the next installment in the Sensational Summer Series minicast. Thank you for listening.